Hi, sweetie. I know. That's a turkey vulture growl. And he says, I don't like you. Leave me alone. Stay, Cody. Hello. 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 Love. Turkey, turkey, turkey vultures like to bite. <laughs> he didn't bite me. Good. Luckily. Like to bite and, and puke on people. <laughs> he didn't regurgitate any food, but he did try to poop on me. Oh, yes. Yeah, so he liked to do that, too. Yeah, they like to bite. They like to throw up on you. Yeah, he was pretty calm. He didn't do either of those on me. Hey, kiddo. How you doing? Well, he's released cage. several more in the last week, and he's cleaned cages. <laughs> yeah, so he's ready for another <laughs> Rotating. one. Rotating. Yeah. Come here, sweetie. I got you. Oh, go. You don't have to worry about their Hi. feet. Yeah, you're this year's young. I felt the chest, it felt like it was fairly robust in there. It didn't feel too thin. Well, you, you feel it right where my fingers are. Uh -huh. Down below. Yeah. Just just the, because you can you, feel the bone at all? You can feel the bone stick out, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little thin. It's not not as thin as a lot of them that you bring to me. Yeah. But it is a little thin. Let's get him checked out. Hi, turkey vulture. We like turkey vultures. A couple years? Yeah, I figured it's... I, know we, I don't think we've ever brought you one. Oh, uh, I had one last year. Did no, you? it was a couple years ago, I think. No, uh, it was last year. I lose track. Okay. Let's see what we're dealing with. Hump huh, kiddo. Okay. Yeah, that feels solid. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Didn't seem to have any problems. I mean, it definitely mm -hmm. did plenty of uh, <laughs> wing flapping when I yeah. had it a few times. Okay. And while we're doing the video, look at these feet, guys. I want you to look at these carefully. You see how long these toes are and how thin they are? And the talons are actually really quite a bit smaller. These feet are not powerful like an eagle, even though they're kind of big. And these are not as pointy. They're a little bit pointy, but not nearly as pointy as an eagle's talons. And so these feet are pretty much harmless as far as you know, I can get my hand in there and, and not worry about, about being damaged like I would with an eagle. And so the feet are pretty much harmless on a turkey vulture but they do like to bite and so you do kind of want to watch that uh, and their bites really quite nasty they do like to bite now you can see his head here uh, it's not this is a turkey vulture but the head's not red it's brown and you can see these very short feathers right here uh, on his head this is a juvenile this is actually one from this year's nest and so this is a young turkey vulture that obviously hasn't been feeding himself very well hi kiddo Aren't you cute? They don't even have to catch their food. Yeah, they don't even catch their food. They just have to eat uh, carrion. But here's the problem, guys. And, th and that is we, we're in the midst of a really severe drought and the rabbit population is down. And so we're not having the roadkill that we normally have. And, and so it's a little bit harder to find food to scavenge right now because, because of the lack of, lack of roadkill. But the great news is Bell has been very successful. Uh, in fact, we just caught another jackrabbit today. And so we've got lots of food. In fact, if he doesn't bite me, that would be really nice. Let's do this. Now, this is our freezer full of rabbit. And that's a, that's a nice fresh jackrabbit that Bell just caught that hasn't, hasn't gotten frozen yet. And so I'm gonna butcher out that jackrabbit uh, for our turkey vulture friend. And uh, Get, give it the uh, the carcass to feed on. So hopefully we'll get him a good start here. So uh, thanks for bringing me some more yeah, work. Thanks Thank for taking you. it, Martin. We appreciate it. All right. Bye -bye. See you guys. Thank you. Know. You know, people think turkey vultures are ugly, uh, but if you truly understand how how magnificent they are. Then they don't get, they don't look nearly so ugly. Look at those nostrils. You can see right through. You can see right through those nostrils. You know, this is one of the only birds in the world that has a good sense of smell. They can smell a dead rotting carcass from about 3,000 feet in the air. And so most birds have virtually no sense of smell. So turkey vultures are unique that way. And again, the soft feet um, that uh, aren't nearly as dangerous as eagles. Hey, pretty baby. And I think this is a boy. Thank you. 
Let's get you in here. There you go, friend. There you go, my friend. Well, I'm gonna go and, and get a that rabbit butchered out for him. Get it, get him some some good food, and hopefully, uh, we'll get some water in here, and and hopefully a few good meals. Uh, there are there are other issues that we can possibly have. I mean, you know, there's a variety of of illnesses. Uh, vultures, though, their digestive system they can handle the most rancid. Uh, food you could possibly imagine without getting sick, but they are susceptible to different kinds of poisons. And uh, they are susceptible to West Nile, and, and right now we've got a lot of mosquitoes, uh, and so that's something we're going to have to watch for as well. But it, at least at this moment, uh, other than he's not feeling real good, uh, he, there's nothing broken. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we can get this guy patched up and back in the wild. Okay, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. If you would like to see how Martin prepares the rabbit as food, please see a link below in the description or the first comment. Given such content is difficult for some people to watch, we uploaded that part of the video as unlisted and with age restriction. I get asked frequently, um, what is the process that we use to diagnose sick, injured, and orphan wildlife that we care for? And it really is a process. Uh, we have a lot of things that we have to take into account, and we're going to talk a little bit about the turkey vulture because its diagnosis kind of changed over time. We, we kind of do a, a cursory inspection just to make sure that, that, uh, that it's not something really traumatic. In this particular turkey vulture, it was pretty obvious. Uh, it wasn't too thin. There was nothing broken, and so there's kind of something else going on. And, and so the, the first thought that comes to mind were it were in the first part of September. And this is when the young turkey vultures, they're no longer with their parents. And so maybe it's just he's not feeding well. We've had a severe drought here in southern Utah. The rabbit population's quite a bit down. There's not a lot of roadkill. Maybe he's just having a hard time finding food. So since he's not critical, uh, after the inspection, we put him out in a chamber and and then we basically give him a good meal. We just, uh, uh, we don't want to uh, to force feed him. We don't want to tube feed him. We don't want to put in IVs. We don't want to stress him any more than absolutely necessary. So we just put him in a chamber and, and then put uh, basically uh, about a half a jackrabbit in there that's all tore open so they can feed really, really easily. And then, and then we watch him. And, oh, you know, over a, the, the next 24 hours, uh, we watched very closely, and he wasn't eating. Okay, so now I've got to, to intervene here. So the next step is let's get some fluids into him. Uh, let's get some food in him. Uh, like I said, he's not critical, critical yet, so let's, let's treat the symptoms. Hey, Turkey Vulture. Yep. Okay, now we've had the turkey vulture overnight and uh, we've assessed the problems and it, uh, the turkey vulture appears to have West Nile virus. <clears throat> West Nile is um, devastating. It can cause swelling of the brain. It's, uh, most of the time it's fatal. Um, the only thing we can do is, just, just is to bas basically treat the symptoms. And so right now all we can do is, is get fluids and nutrition into it in the hopes that we can keep it alive long enough that it'll get past the virus for us. I ain't little turkey vulture. I know, I know, I know. We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha, you, baby. Hi. So he's one sick little critter. And he didn't feed himself at all yesterday. No, he didn't eat, so. We have to do the, the liquid diet here. Yeah, you can bite that, I don't care. There we go. There we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Dude, my little vulture friend. It's 
Let's get some fluids in there, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. Get some fluid, food and fluids. See if we can keep you, uh, keep you going until you get past this really horrible, horrible illness. There we go. That's my boy. What a good boy. Yes. There's my boy. And so we'll be doing this several times a day. Um, uh, tube feeding him with this liquid diet. Until, uh, until he either gets stronger or we lose him. One of the two. My baby. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Here we go. Throw a bunch of it up. You won't get it all up. There we go. Vultures are really good at throwing up stuff. So, okay, well. Got a lot more work to do with him. So this year especially, it just hasn't, the rehab has not slowed down this year. Yeah, with the lack of prey probably. Yeah, I think the drought had a lot of fun with it. <clears throat> anyway, the, the turkey vulture was showing all the signs of West Nile. Oh. And so I was quite certain we were going to lose it. And with uh, several tube feedings, or a few days. So here's our turkey vulture, and it's been eating up a storm. Again, compliments of Belle the Harris Hawk. That's Jackrabbit. And, uh, and like I said, uh, all the signs of West Nile uh, had some real bad balance issues, and, and it's doing really, really well now. It's eating like a horse. And so I'm very, very hopeful that beautiful turkey vulture, and we love turkey vultures. You gotta just adore them. If you can hear her gr or him, it's a male. Hi, sweetie. I know. That's a turkey vulture growl. And he says, I don't like you. Leave me alone. But if all goes well, he'll, he'll be releasable. Hopefully in the next, next, few weeks. We still have to continue to work through the, the West Nile. So that doesn't just go away overnight. That takes a little time to get his balance back and, and get him flying. And, but I think we're going to have a, a West Nile save, which is great. So anyway, that's, that's where we're at. And so we continue to uh, uh, have him on a liquid diet and after a couple of days, we started moving him into solid foods with, a, with liquid and just kind of flush him out. And he started doing a little bit better. And, and so after a few days, he, he was able to now feed himself. But we still really don't know what the issue was. Was it West Nile? I'm kind of doubting at this point. Because if it, if it was West Nile, the... Um, the virus would have caused some other effects that, that we would notice. Um, instead of just a little bit of weakness and maybe some mild neurological issues, um, West Nile's really bad and it gets, it gets really, really bad uh, on, these, on these birds. So um, with him starting to get a little bit better now, you know, again, it didn't seem to be a concussion, doesn't seem to be West Nile. Um, you know, young vulture, but he wasn't that thin, so I don't know that it was a lack of food, that he wasn't able to feed himself. And so the, really the next issue is there's an awful lot of people uh, that go out around here in the southern Utah area with shotguns shooting jackrabbits with lead shot. Go. Isn't he beautiful? Now this is a turkey vulture. This is one that came in very, very, very sick. It, it, initially I thought it might have had West Nile virus because it was right at the time when we usually get West Nile in. <clears throat> but more and more I think it was uh, lead poisoning. But we've got him treated and, and he's doing very well. There he goes, throws up. Now turkey vultures, when they get stressed, they throw up and they poop. And, and so that was the first thing to throw up. The nice thing is that he's had really good high quality food. 
<laughs> instead of throwing up dead, rotted flesh from rotting roadkill that, that he eats, you know, he's had uh, much more high quality food, and so it doesn't smell quite as bad. But nevertheless, it, it's uh, always, always a challenge with a turkey vulture. We don't want to. Hi, baby. Come on. I know you're not quite with me, aren't you? There we go. Okay, sweetie. Okay, we got you. Now, turkey vultures are, again, very, very different than eagles and hawks and those kinds of things. First of all, he smells bad. And we don't really worry about his feet too much, but they do like to bite. And so we kind of watch. So we want to get a, get a little grip over here to his head so we don't get bit or thrown up on. Hey, baby, you're okay. Good and strong. Hi, sweetie. There's my pretty, pretty boy. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful animal? Look how... Now, very, very unique. Most birds have virtually no sense of smell. Our turkey vulture here with those large nostrils has a wonderful sense of smell. And that's how they find their food. They find it by smell. Mm -hmm. See right through the nose. They can see right through the nose. And so they can smell a dead, rotting carcass from about 3,000 feet in the air. And their stomach is designed to basically digest bone and all sorts of horrible, horrible, disgusting meats. It doesn't harm them a bit because they can, they can deal with that, but lead poisoning is a different issue. And in fact, Belle and I were out chasing rabbits today and we found uh, a, two jackrabbits shot with shotguns. And so that's what poisoned this one is people go out and shoot jackrabbits with shotguns and the lead pellets the scavengers, like my turkey vulture here, comes in and they feed and it makes them sick. And so the, the lead poisoning is, is a big issue for us when it comes to these guys. And I want to show you something else that's really kind of cool. You know, um, you know, people ask me, do birds have ears? And of course they do. And you can see the turkey vulture's ears right there next to my hand. In all birds, the ear is just a small hole on the side of the head for birds. They don't have a, an earlobe. Uh, or any skin, it's just a small hole. And all birds' ears are exactly the same, just small holes, but their, their heads are covered with feathers so you can't see them. But with our turkey vulture here, you can see that hole right there, and that's the bird's ear. So again, unique, because you can actually see the ears and those big nostrils for smelling dead rotting carcasses and soft, very soft feet, even though they do have claws, but they're, they don't have the str any real strength in their feet. They're just an ideal scavenger. And we love to have them around because they do clean up dead rotting carcasses in the mountains and the deserts and helps to stop the spread of disease. So very valuable, we love these guys. Let's go get them in a box. I know. It's okay, baby. Yeah. You want to throw up some more, don't you? Here's my boy. Such a pretty boy. Huh. Yes, you are. Such a pretty boy. Yeah, such a pretty boy. And so what better way to celebrate Halloween than we'll release one of these beautiful animals back to the wild. So we'll get him in this box. There you go. There. Now people ask me, you know, what about my veterinarians? And to be honest with you, you know, I'm here in, in small town southern Utah, and I've got three veterinarians that I use great people they help us a ton um, but they're not avian veterinarians they're they're uh, livestock and small animal vets and so they don't have a whole lot of experience working with these animals like like we do and, and so most of the time when I bring an animal in to the veterinarian I, I'm looking for services uh, that I cannot render personally so we're looking more at bringing them in for surgical uh, situations um, but as far as the diagnosis is concerned, the, most of the vets here in southern Utah 
if it's avian related, um, they call me and say, hey, we've got, you know, some brought in a bird. Here's its issues. What do you think? And, and so as far as being able to diagnose these birds, um, I've got 50 years experience, which is literally more than probably all the vets combined in the state of Utah. And, and so they kind of rely on, uh, on my experience. We start with the least aggressive treatment first. Let's see, let's see if the bird will eat. Let's see if just a little, some fluids and some food will take care of it. Let's, and then we kind of go through the process of elimination until um, we get to the point where we have an idea of, of what we're dealing with. Is when you watch our videos and you, you watch the process and what we're doing and how we're caring for the animals, you, you've got to understand that is, that's just a, a very, very short moment in time. And, and what we're actually doing is it's many, many, many hours of observations, uh, many, many hours of consultation and trying to understand what, what uh, we're dealing with and what works best. And, and so what you actually see on, on the videos that we put out here for you is a very, very shortened version. Um, the last thing you, you want to do is, is to sit and watch me write notes and read texts and, and trying to... Uh, best understand what the illnesses are that I'm dealing with. And so we, we kind of melt it down into a, a, a short something that uh, people can stand to watch. Well, so we are up at the Sea Overlook, one of our favorite places to release the animals. <clears throat> and uh, this is probably the last time we'll be able to release something here. Hello, Ferrugi. You got the hood off. That's not good. It means it's going to be a little bit of a, of a trick to get you out of that box su successfully without you getting me. Okay, critter number two, our turkey vulture. Let's see what we can do with him. Hi, baby. Okay. Okay, sweetie. Okay. It's all right, baby. Let me get rid of that glove. It's more house than it's worth. So, to grab him. Okay, there's my baby. I know, so terrible. You want to grab that paper soon? Mm -hmm. We need to add some. There's my boy. So beautiful. We love these guys. Okay, it's your turn to go back to the wild. Pretty boy. Yeah, what a perfect way to celebrate Halloween. Releasing a turkey vulture. What a, oh, it's okay. Shh, 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 shh. You ready, boy? Yeah, you wanna go, don't you? Okay.